Hey guys, it's Robin the Lady Biker. Hey, I am actually out for a ride today and I stopped here in Fremantle, right here along the ocean. This is a gorgeous little port city. But what I'm really wanting to talk to you about today is a camping hack that Allie and I have figured out and I thought I would share it with you today. So, come on, let me tell you a little bit about it. Right. As I said, I'm here on the coast in Fremantle, Western Australia. One of our favorite places for Allie and I to go and just spend a little time is here in Frio. So, but because we're looking at possibly taking an unexpected camping trip this weekend, I thought I would share with you a camping hack that we figured out. Now, one of the things that he and I have had so many issues with over the many camping trips we've had are ground covers because a lot of places have had kind of rough soil, rocky, uh, sticky, just like things that have punctured ground cloths. So we have had to come up with a hack to figure out one, how to replace it and do it at a reasonable cost. And two, you know, something that if it gets tore up again, who cares, we can redo it. So what we finally came up with, you ready for this? <laughs> house wrap, of all things, house wrap. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this, depending on uh, experience or country that you live in, house wrap is a product, it's a moisture and temperature barrier that they usually put into many houses between the framing and then the exterior wall. It, it just creates this fantastic barrier. And, you know, the awesome parts of it are that it is a moisture barrier. So when it rains, you know, if you've got a tent that has like a, a cloth type ground cloth, like you would have like your, your rain fly and all that, you know, it's great until something touches it and then it wicks moisture like crazy. Well, this, having this house wrap, we put it between all of our cloth layers and the ground. And it works fabulous. Who knew? It's relatively inexpensive. It, okay, so let's go over a couple of positives about it. One, it is a moisture barrier. Awesome. Two, it's readily available at most home improvement stores. Now, I have to say, in all the places I've lived, I've always had a home improvement store close by. The US, Germany, here in Australia, you could get to one where you can buy all of your, you know, your gardening supplies, your tools, all these different things. Most home improvement stores will have house wrap. And I'm calling it house wrap, or you may see it as home wrap, uh, because different manufacturers, like the one that we got, because it was available when we bought it, was Tyvek. But there are many, many manufacturers all over the world that do this. But if you ask for home or house wrap, they should be able to help you find it. So it's readily available. It's relatively inexpensive. We bought a huge sheet of it for like 35 bucks. And it was enough to cut two ground cloths for both of our tents. So, you know, it's available. It's relatively inexpensive. Um, you can cut it to the size you need it. It doesn't matter. We have, and of course I've got a helicopter flying by, so hopefully it won't interfere with the sound on this. We'll find out. Um, I'll be back when the helicopter's by. All right, well, I think it's past, so let's try this again. Where was I? Oh yeah, you can cut it to size. So we have our two-person tent for whenever we are going solo and a four-person tent for when Allie and I are camping together. One is relatively square, while the other is very rectangular. So we needed to be able to cut different sizes. And, you know, we have an old tent that we pull out every once in a while that's a, um, an octagon. So it doesn't matter what size tent you have, you can cut it to fit your tent. And the best part, most ground covers don't have a cover that are a 
extension that goes under your vestibules. So whenever you have your uh, your tent fly on, you know, you've got this section that's dirt or grass or rock or whatever, whatever the, what is with the helicopters today? We'll come back and talk about vestibules. Ugh. All right, the challenges of recording outdoors. All right, so with these, we were able to cut a, like a little ground cover for the vestibule. So we have a place where we can put um, extra bags, we can put our, our boots and everything down, and it gives us a little section that helps us get grass and sand and different things off of us before we actually climb into our tent. So that is so many awesome things, some positives about it. Now, two negatives that we found about this. One, it's noisy. So when you're laying it out and you're folding it back up, everyone within a 500 foot or 200 meter radius is gonna hear you. It just is. Uh, but the other thing is, is once it tears, and even though it's a, it's a woven fibrous type paper waxy product, once it does tear, and it can tear, but once it does, it tears, I mean, the tear goes and it's destroyed and you will have to cut you a new one. So the positives definitely outweigh the negatives because even if it does tear, damn flies, even if it does tear, who cares? It's readily, readily available and it's inexpensive. Easy peasy to replace. All right, so let me talk about how we cut ours to figure it out. So first thing you do, once you get it, you gotta lay out your ground cloth or you gotta lay out the, the home wrap and then you have to set your tent up because you want to cut it no bigger than this actual footprint of the tent and the vestibules if you wanna cut a, vest, a vestibule part. So you need to have not just your ground cloth, but you know, within the size of the tent. Now, one word to the wise, as you're doing this, err on the side of cutting it too big because you can always cut it down, which by the way, we did the first time we did it. Um, you can always cut it down, but once you cut it too small, it's too small and you have to start over. So lay out your tent, set it up and get the outline. Now I like to cut mine just about, what's that, about two to three inches, about five to eight centimeters smaller than what the maximum size of my tent is. Because I want to make sure that there's none of the of the the ground cover showing in case it rains because you don't want to give water a chance to get between or on top of the house wrap or the ground cloth and then between your uh, your tent floor because anybody who's camped if that happens you're gonna get wet. So that's about how I do it. Now I used a Sharpie and I used a straight edge so that I could get everything kind of, okay, that was my OCD and my, my perfection is showing. So that's kind of what I did. So I had nice straight lines. If straight lines aren't a big deal to you, you don't even have to do that. Then all you need is a simple pair of scissors. Any kind you can get from a office supply store, um, just good scissors like you would get just out of your office desk. Easy to cut, cut right along the lines. Now, uh, don't bother trying to put grommets into it to attach to your tent poles. Tried it, didn't work because whenever I put the grommets in, it tore the tie back anyway, so we just cut those off. Once you kind of get it down and then get your tent staked down, it's not gonna move unless you're in an extremely weird, crazy wind, like what I'm trying to block the microphone from right now. If you get into crazy wind, then yeah, you may have some issues, but most of the time it won't be a bother. And then just cut it out, that's it. And you're done. <laughs> Put your tent away, fold it up, and here's, oh, another big positive. Another big positive about this, guys, it folds up small. It folds up really, 
really small. For example, this. That's how small my two person tent ground cover folds up to. So whenever you're on the bike and you're moto camping and you know space is at a premium, it is super, super easy to pack everything down into a small space. So, okay guys, that's one of the camping hacks that Allie and I have come across. Now, so many good ones are out there, but this is one that we hadn't seen very often. It was just one of those random weird ideas that we thought, huh, let's try it. Now, I'm sure there's somebody else out here on YouTube that's done it before. And if you ever find anyone, shoot me their link because I would love to know what they did to see if I can improve on what Allie and I have done. <laughs> But anyway, guys, that is all that's going on. Um, I'm going to get back on the road so these flies will leave me alone. And because you know what? It is a beautiful day and I'm going to take advantage of it while I can. So with that being said, guys, if you can, get out and ride. When you do, have fun, be safe, and I'm going to catch you on the next video. Bye, guys.